Welcome in to the Triple Play Fantasy 15. 15 minutes for all your fantasy needs. You're on the clock. You got to pick a player. You got to pick between players. That's what we're here for. We're help to help you in that bind and help sure make sure you make the right decisions when you're making your draft selections here. I'm joined by a couple ugly looking gentlemen, but very smart gentlemen, and that is the Doc and Kevin Coleman. What are go what's going on, fellas? You're the one that's ugly. You have little facial hair. I've got as much as you, so you're calling it yourself ugly. So that's fine. Yeah, I got it. This is more than what you have, and you're two well, and a half years older. Kevin's Kevin's got more than both of us combined, and he's just glowing in it right now. Well, that's because I'm Portuguese. Us Portuguese people have a lot of hair, so you know that I get my culture. It's it's for the culture. I like it. Well, we're for the culture today because we're talking about something that's kind of polarizing, and that's the the Steelers wide receivers. You got Juju Smith-Schuster, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. And right now, according to DLF, Deontay Johnson's going as wide receiver 25. Chase Claypool's going as wide receiver 27. And Juju Smith-Schuster's going as wide receiver 28. Uh, so they're not separated by too many rounds. Again, obviously, Deontay is going a little bit ahead of the other two. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to figure out which of these guys you strongly believe in. And it, maybe it comes down to your roster construction. But each of us are going to sit here and try to defend each of those wide receivers and why you should take them. And we're going to start with Mr. Kevin Coleman, Du Bois. Why should we be taking Deontay Johnson over the other two? Well, I don't think there's any other choice uh, if you want to win your leagues. I, I, when you look at what he is talent-wise and perspective, he had 144 targets last year. Uh, now it's been basically missing two games. He missed one because of injury, one because he couldn't catch the damn ball, which doesn't bode well for my argument right now. But So he had 144 targets still. Uh, last year he also finished right behind Devonte Adams with 54 percent highest rate of expected top 12 finishes, uh, and so that's pretty good company to have in. And that wasn't a fluke. So he finished eight eight top 24 finishes, and he had 13 top 36 finishes last year for each week. Uh, and it's entirely possible that you know you're going to see Claypool make that jump, but I think that's going to slice into Juju more than it would Deontay. I think Deontay is the wide receiver one in that team, and you're going to see him make that third year leap just like Godwin did, just like Ridley did. So I think Deontay can be the guy next in line he's going to get peppered with tar targets and it's not un unconceivable for him to get 130 targets again i mean is that good now he's got to be a little bit more efficient with the yards if he can be a little bit more efficient with the yards ppr wise i think he's going to get the catches so if he gets those yards get a few a few more touchdowns i think we could be talking about he's my wide receiver 12 in dynasty format so i'm really high on deontay yeah, I mean, a, a very low A dot last year, but again, was getting a lot of grabs, was Ben's number one target throughout most of the season when he was healthy. So I can see the argument for him there, but I'm scared of a couple other things about him. But before we get to that, I'll let Doc go next. Why should we be taking the guy that makes TikTok videos instead of catching passes? Well, he was second to Deontay Johnson. Deontay had 144 targets. Juju had 128, but he actually had the most catches out of the uh crew with 97 and he had nine touchdowns which led the team along with chase claypool as well he had four games with 10 plus targets but no fewer than five so very consistent week in week out he's also has a rapport with ben roethlisberger he's been there the longest i think when, especially what we saw with antonio brown there ben really likes having a rapport with his bride receivers knowing where they're gonna go and juju signed a one-year eight million dollar contract it's uh another one year prove it to me and he's actually the only player in NFL history that has two catches or two touchdowns of 90 plus yards. So we forget that that big play opportunity is there as opposed to Deontay Johnson, where it's a lot of, you know, four or five yard passes. But Juju has that high upside that I think we sometimes forget about. So are you comfortable, even though he's going last, do you think he's going to have better production than these other two wide receivers? Yeah, I, I think what I look for is someone that's consistent. I don't think that you're going to, feel like you ever need to bench him. I think Juju is a solid flex. But with Deontay, once again, you're really banking on the volume, 144 targets, but only 85 catches out of those. And with Chase Claypool, seven of his nine touchdowns came in three games. So you're really banking that he has a boomer bust week, kind of like a Sammy Watkins. And I don't know if I can feel comfortable starting that person each week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be comparing to the Sammy Watkins. What is that? <laughs> what is this shade throwing yeah. over here? Sammy Watkins will have 50% of his touchdowns in one game. Yeah, but Deontay is still can't have those volume games. Yeah, I, I mean, you're right. Juju's consistent, but all I hear out of that is you finish fifth in your league every year. Like, mm -hmm. Deontay can hit those boomer busts, and he can give you those wide receiver type numbers. Juju will be okay if he scores a touchdown for you, but there's not a guarantee he's going to do that, especially with Claypool moving around. Yeah, and I Deontay, agree. Deontay had 144 targets and only seven touchdowns. Juju had 128 targets and caught two more touchdowns. 
I like that ratio better. Well, let me ask you this. If you guys like touchdowns, why don't we get to my guy? Let's talk about Chase Claypool, who uh, this is a guy that if you're talking about who you think might lead the receivers and touchdowns next year, I think the overwhelming flavor would have to be uh, Chase Claypool, who is coming off of a, a pretty good rookie campaign, if I do say so myself. He had nine touchdowns receiving and two touchdowns on the ground. Now, let's first take a look at rushing stats, which for wide receivers, yeah, maybe it's not everything, but it's some extra production that you're not expecting. So rushing attempts. He had 10 rushing attempts and two rushing touchdowns last year. Let's compare that to Juju Smith-Schuster, who had one carry for 13 yards last year. Um, and actually, I'm sorry, that was in 2018. He didn't actually not get a single rush in 2020. So let's let's chalk that up away. And then Deontay Johnson in 2020 had three carries for 15 yards. So he's not running the ball. So the primary ball carrier from the wide receiver position to get extra touchdowns on an end around is going to be Chase Claypool. Then let's talk about, let's look at the, the target distribution here. Right now, the target percentage last year in the red zone was, uh, was Chase Claypool, number one, 20% target share, then Juju at 19%. Deontay Johnson was fourth at 14% of the target share inside the red zone. So Chase Claypool is the number one red zone target, had 20 targets compared to Deontay Johnson's 14, Juju's 19. Then let's look at total targets just throughout the season. You have Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, the number 1% target share at 20.5%. Chase Claypool's number two at 19.3%. Uh, but again, Chase Claypool is his rookie season, so he's still developing a rapport with Roth with Roethlisberger there. So I think he has that potential to become the number one targeted wide receiver across the full year with him. Uh, but then again, looking at Chase Claypool, you look in the first three games of the season, he had two targets, three targets, and four targets. Then in week four, blew up with 11 targets for 110 yards and three touchdowns. He went on to have at least eight targets in six of the rest of the games. So he pretty much in six of the last 12 regular season games, uh, he pretty much, uh, he had at least six of those targets. So I think again, it took him a little while to, to build up the rapport with Roethlisberger, but this is a guy, I think, again, if you're looking for touchdown upside, it's Chase Claypool. If you're looking for a guy that you can probably grab a little bit after Deontay Johnson, that has a little bit more of a ceiling to him, it's Chase Claypool. Obviously, there's a chance that he doesn't fulfill where his draft position is, and he's very touchdown reliant, but the targets seem to be there. The averages, as far as his yards per catch, are there. Uh, again, a guy that's going to be a big boom to your team where you're drafting him. So I'm, I'm all the Chase Claypool train here. So I Chase Claypool had a touchdown on 14.5% of his catches. I see that dropping. It was kind of similar to what we've seen with people like A.J. Brown that you know, like six of his receptions in 2019 accounted for like 40% of his yards. I don't think you can bank on that high volume. Again, Juju caught a touchdown on 9.2% of his receptions and Deontay Johnson with 8.23. I also think this was Ben's first year coming back from his, from Tommy John surgery, which essentially is reconstruction of the elbow, which I think is why he did a lot more of those short passes to Deontay and to Chase Claypool. They're also going to have more of a running game. They didn't really have that last year with James Conner and with Benny Snell. I think that's going to take away carries because they drafted Najee Harris in the first round. I think rather than if they're in the red zone and they do an end around, they're just going to pound it in with Harris. And that takes away Claypool's upside because, hey, I look, Robert Woods, some other wide receivers, you're right. They do build in those rushing stats, but I think that's very hard to predict year to year. But every team does it no matter what. The Chiefs do it with Tyreek Hill. The, the Rams do it with Robert Woods. The Steelers did it with every team. Does I wouldn't it. say I wouldn't say every team does it. Most teams have a receiving option that can go on an end around and will we'll get rushing touchdowns. Like if you look every single year, I would be shocked if there's not every single team has one wide receiver rushing touchdown. I can't think of who does that for the Giants. Uh, Odell Beckham did it when he was. He's not. On, he's not on the team anymore. I, I'd have to look, but I. It's. I don't think it's uncommon for that, even with a good running back. <laughs> All right. Let, okay. So I, I want to mention Claypool really quick because I think you're right. He did get targets in the red zone, right? But his completion percentage in the red zone is only 50%. He, he was 10 for 20, basically. He had 10 completions out of 20 targets. So I think his efficiency uh, does go down a little bit because when you look at Juju, who he's at 84% in that area, 16 completions for 19 targets. If you look at Deontay, he's 10 for 14, so he's at 71%. And I also think that one thing that Claypool struggles with is creating separation. Uh, and you'll see that target separation. He's at actually ranked 99th, according to Player Profiler. And then his contested catch rate is only is 103rd in the league. 
compared to where like you got Deontay Johnson contested catch rate. He's 32 in the league. So I think that Claypool does struggle with, with creating separation one and two. I think that he struggles with, Hey, getting those contested catches. He's going to see better defenders this year. He's going to get the defense's pressure now because they're going to start game planning for him. And I think the one thing that we're missing here is they're going to run the ball more now in the red zone because they have Najee Harris. And so where are those targets going to actually go to? Well, if Chase Capel can't consistently do it, I think they're going to go to Juju and Deontay. But you don't think Deontay is going to get the opposing corner, the opposing number one corner more often than not? And Chase Claypool will then have the advantage of facing the number two or the number three, depending on Juju. So he'll have better matchups against weaker corners if he could be more targeted in that sense. Maybe, but his contested catch rate is really is not not. I don't want to say it's really bad, but it's not very good. So even if he is getting those great matchups, he I don't know if he has that separation ability in the red zone to do it. Deontay is a better talent, I believe. So for me, Deontay can step up and create that separation against cornerback ones where Claypool can't. And even if he is going against cornerback two, which I think he will go to, especially if Juju goes to the slot, uh, I, I I would really struggle with him targeting him in the red zone, especially when they can just hand it to Najee or throw it to Deontay. Or have Juju in that slot, probably against a weaker corner with it when he works well out of the slot. That's when he was with Antonio Brown. So I, I really get worried about kind of where does where does Claypool fit? Well, I'll tell you what, if Deontay Johnson drops the ball like last year, <laughs> Chase you guys are just one down. You guys are just kicking each other, which is why Juju is there. You guys haven't dinged Juju. Once again, he's in a contract year. I think he took a one year eight million. He realized he didn't have a really great season. I think he's gonna kind of put the TikTok side. Because this is, he's 24 years old. I think this is his best chance to get a big payday if he can have a thousand plus yards or over 10 touchdowns. And I think it's really going to motivate him in this offseason. Like I said, he has the rapport with Ben. I think he came back because he has that. The city loves him. And I think that's going to motivate him to try to get a big contract. And I think he wants it from the Steelers more than any other team. Yeah. I think well, we'll have to watch how it plays out. Obviously, with the increased rushes we're expecting this year. Uh, the passing is going to go down. So we'll find out who's going to be the Steelers pass catcher that suffers the most from that because they're not going to have three relevant wide receivers with most likely a running game and a passing option that Najee Harris is expected to be next season. So let us know in the comments below. Are you team Deontay at round 25? Or I'm sorry, pick wide receiver 25. Are you team Chase Claypool as wide receiver 27? Or are you team Juju at wide receiver 28? Who are you targeting? Let us know who and why in the comments below. We love your feedback. And if you're enjoying these Fantasy 15s, make sure you subscribe to the channel because uh, we have plenty of these that come out multiple times per week about running backs, wide receivers, different sports, all the good stuff that you're loving and you're craving in 15 minutes or less. Fellas, do you have anything you want to say before we peace out of here? Juju, you better quit TikTok. <laughs> Just draft Deontay Johnson. He's not going to drop the ball this year. Guaranteed on this platform. Oh, wow. Okay. That, hard guarantees from Kevin. I don't know if he can uh, write that check, but we'll, we'll find out this season. Uh, but thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next episode.